hi there um, I thought I'll do a small video tutorial on how to mesh a 2d cylinder using block mesh well block mesh is a mesh tool which comes along with the open source software called open form well there is another mesh tool called the snappy hex mesh well the snappy hex mesh can be employed while meshing a complex geometry in this video although I will restrict myself to only block mesh and in that I will largely speak about how to make a coarse mesh and work up to a very refined mesh of course if you want a 3d block mesh all that you really have to do is extend your coordinates in the z direction and uh, Apart from the mesh, I thought I will also speak a bit about the turbulence model which I used for simulating my cylinder mm. at a Reynolds number of 1 into 10 to the power 6. So I will also talk about that. And uh, okay, let's let's start with the mesh. So if you don't have a case file as such and if you are an absolute beginner, a good place is uh, a place to start or download your case files is this website that I would like to suggest and they are called the wolf dynamics and I tell you they have done a very 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 good job in compiling case files which work up to almost 1.5 GB if I'm right and uh, they also have uh, tutorial files that you can read so if you're a beginner absolute beginner in if you want a head start and if you are looking for a place to download case files this is again the place you can look into and if you are an expert in open form and still wanting to get some insight into complex simulations this is again a good place to look into and there are also other training programs that they are offering you might want to check out them but yes so the file that you have to download from the website is called uh, Vortex Shedding, which is over here, and I have access to the same using my terminal. So let me open the case, and yeah, the folder is again subdivided into 12 other case files, and each of them is distinct uh, in terms of the refinement and the solver turbulence model used so we can take a look at them well um, their refinement is actually pretty coarse because the medium for the simulation they've used is air so the density is 1.2 to 5 so you don't require a refined mesh to get good values for force coefficients so let's immediately open the case and uh, well, the block mesh dictionary comes inside the constant folder over here. Let me open it for you. And within the folder, there is another folder called the poly mesh. So you'll have to open that as well to find that you have your block mesh dictionary sitting over here. So all the parameters that make up a mesh is inside this block mesh dictionary. And you'll have to execute this file. To get your mesh done so let's go out and do that right away so I will execute the mesh using the block mesh command and let's view our course mesh so here we go here is the mesh the domain seems to be a bit small and the refinement as such looks very less but that's okay because it's just simulation using air uh, for the vortex study mm, yeah. so if you zoom in and look closely the mesh is divided into several blocks and regions so there is this region immediately around the cylinder which has got more refinement let's call this as R1 yeah R1 and there are there is the other region over here for 
which represents the wake so all of them can be collectively called as region R2 and there is the other less influential region over here let's call them R3 so the region R1, R2 and R3 are very very important if you are doing a grid study because you will work your way from a very coarse mesh up to a very very refined mesh so you might want to look into those regions now each of these blocks which make up the mesh is a singular block over here let's just consider this block over here each of these blo blocks are defined by coordinate systems and if you see there is a coordinate over here the, this, uh, there is a coordinate over here coordinate up there coordinate up there so these coordinates together make up this block so these coordinates are defined inside the block mesh dictionary which I showed you before so they are up here if this looks like Greek and Latin to you which it did to me I would suggest you take a piece of paper put down all these coordinates down and represent them using a point and join all these points and you will realize that you will get this mesh the block and the regions so that uh, all of this all of these blocks are represented by these coordinates and they make up all the blocks together make up the mesh so that is over here so if you look at this block again over here if you consider this you will realize that uh, the concentration of cells are more over here immediately close to the cylinder and away from the cylinder as we move out the concentration seems to have reduced so this can be controlled by a parameter inside your blocks which is called simple grading and this basically talks about where you want the refinement concentration to be if it is close to a cylinder then you will have to play around with these parameters and of course this parameter which is aligned over here defines the number of cells that you have inside that you want inside your block which make up the mesh so that is this parameter so once again th this parameter over here defines the number of cells and this parameter which is called the simple grading defines the amount of concentration you want cell concentration that you want in a certain area so this is these are basically parameters and coordinates for a very coarse mesh and of course if you are using water as your medium you obviously have to refine your mesh and increase your domain size so you will i have worked up from a very coarse mesh over here to what you see over here so if you see the area that has been manipulated largely is this one where I've increased the number of cells and of course the concentration of cells as well if you go to the coarse mesh you see I've gone from 20 10 and 1 to 150 and 1 and in the simple grading there's 1000 so 1 by 1000 is nothing but 0 0.001 and uh, you have the same over here too so 1 by 2 is 0 0.5 so I cannot explain to you how I got to this place so it will take an, an entire video so I will just stop with this and if you actually put them all down in a piece of paper and you can actually work your way up to this uh, defined mesh so it, you can actually pause your video now and uh, take a look at this to get a defined mesh so let's go view how our refined mesh looks in the terminal let me come out 
for a post mesh case and open the refine mesh case here again I will execute the block mesh command and my mesh is done and let's use the same using paraform kaboom here we go this is how a refined mesh looks like <laughs> these are actually aren't thick lines as it appears to be if you zoom in you will realize that uh, these are actually cells very very closely packed to each other so as you zoom out they tend to appear like they are thick lines so let's quickly check the region immediately around the cylinder which we called which we named R1 yeah here we go this is the region that I was talking about so immediately close to the cylinder there is more refinement and away from the cylinder the refinement decreases and this can be controlled by simple grading and in this region if you want to increase or decrease your cells it is again defined by this parameter over here so try to break your head with this and you will come up with a good mesh so that's mm, pretty much about uh, how we go from a coarse mesh to a refined mesh so okay uh, let's quickly check the the rating for the mesh that we created by using the command check mesh and see if there's any non orthogonality in it so for the refined mesh that i showed you if you see the non orthogonality is good and also the skewed mesh is also at a good place so this mesh is really good and the y plus value of the mesh that you just saw is close to uh, 60 so what I did was um, I was just wondering if I have to increase my refinement from Y plus value of 60 to less than 1 to run my K Omega SST turbulence model and then I came up with an idea and it just worked out for me what I did was I used the same um, I use the same refined mesh whose value y plus value was 60 and all that I did was use this command transform points minus scale and a certain factor so when I did this my mesh as a whole was scaled down and my y plus value came down to less than 1 and I ran my k omega SST turbulence model and I realized that my CLRMS overshot the experimental values by a very large margin with an error of around 10 percentage which is really bad and by the way um, I would suggest two papers research papers that you can use to compare your simulation results to one is Dravkovich and he's got the experimental CD plot and Nockberg he's got the CLRMS values of the experimental results so you can compare your simulation results to them and see how your open form solver is uh, responding so I ran the K Omega SST model for Y plus value of less than 1 and my CLRMS value was bad and I believe one of the important reasons is that this is just a 2D mesh and I didn't run the K Omega SST on a 3D mesh and there might be cross flows and so the force coefficient was not predicted properly so what I did was I scrapped the K Omega SST model and I also scrapped the scaling factor and I stuck with the Y plus value of 60 mesh which I created using these parameters and I uh, employed the K epsilon turbulence model and I ran the simulation and I got good results and I think I have my results given somewhere below just give me a second um, yeah so these are my simulation results and by the way I ran the simulation for a Reynolds number of 1 into 10 to the power 6 so that's really high and uh, these are for 
lower and also on those here we go so this is the CLRMS plot for the K Omega SST model which I ran with a Y plus value of less than 1 so the CLRMS was over predicted at 0 0.21 this has to be really less for 1 into 10 to the power 6 Reynolds number so I scrapped it like I told you I ran the K epsilon turbulence model for a Y plus value of around 30 and I got good results very close to the experimental results and these are my plots the CD mean plot and the CLRMS plot so these are the CLRMS and CD values for the Reynolds number of 1 into 10 to the power 6 so here is it uh, that's pretty much about the 2D block mesh simulation and if you want a 3D mesh just extend your coordinates in the Z direction and of course I will also speak about snappy expression with unsected videos. But that is it for the video that I plan to do for now. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.